Shalom Chavrin, I'm Stephen Ben Dunoon, and you're watching Dunoon Institute of Biblical Research. Listen, just want to give you a quick update and share a few little thoughts here with you from uh, the book of Matthew, the Hebrew Gospels. Uh, first off, uh, in, oh gosh, hopefully by the time you get this video, it'll only be about 30 minutes, but I'll be on Radio Liberty com www.radioliberty.com with Barry Chamish. I'll uh, be doing a live interview with him today, Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we'll be talking about the Vatican's influence on Israel, so I hope you're able to join us on that. Uh, but just real quick, I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to being ready to start a series with you on the Hebrew book of Matthew. Very, very interesting uh, insights in this book here, and I can't get over... Uh, the things that he says in here. I really can't, especially uh, verse 15, uh, where he says here, Ze Antichristas ve Zevav Shakuts Shamam Haomer Alpe Daniel Omed. Okay, he's talking about Daniel speaking about the Antichrist. He literally uses the Greek term for the word Antichrist. That is to come. So we know that that is the prince that is spoken of that shall come in Daniel's prophecy, uh, Daniel chapter 9. So clearly, Matthew, like John, identifies the Antichrist uh, as that uh, prince that shall come. Uh, another interesting thing here, verse 24, because false messiahs and false prophets will arise, they will give signs and great wonders so that if it can be, they will come to lead the chosen astray. Now, I know that God has certainly called out a Gentile bride. I know that he has, as Paul says, uh, not Paul, but uh, Yeshua has come to call out a Gentile bride. I know that he has been dealing with the Gentiles greatly. Well, for the last 2,000 years, it's, the door has been open to them. And please don't misunderstand me. When I talk about his heart turns to Israel, um, it doesn't mean that there's no Gentile saved whatsoever. I, I believe that when he rises off of his throne, this is when the salvation point stops. That could be at the very end of the 70th week of Daniel. I've never quite figured that out. I know that a question came up on that recently. But the thing is, as Jesus says, when the uh, dispensation of the Gentiles be fulfilled, then he turns his heart back to the Jews. So that's what I kind of look at there. There does come a time where he begins to deal with Israel once again. And I think we're really rapidly running near that point there. So when he talks about false messiahs and false prophets will arise and will show signs and great wonders. So if, it, if, if they be, they will, could come, could come to lead the chosen astray. I don't really know if he's actually talking about the Gentile bride. I can't help but think that maybe Matthew is actually talking about the children of Israel. Because you've got to keep in mind, every anointed, so-called anointed person that's come on the scene has tried to come to lead the Jewish people. But it just never has worked. Uh, and it seems like God has just had his hand of mercy upon them, you know, uh, because of that. Uh, another one, let me just drop down here. This is very fascinating to me. Two women will be grinding at a mill. One will be taken, the other left. This is because the angels at the end of the world will remove the stumbling blocks from the world and will separate the good from the evil. Could the angels, the word melchim, in this case here, could that actually represent messengers? Because it can be translated either way, messengers or like a heavenly body. But what's interesting, they remove the stumbling blocks from the world so that good and evil, you can separate between the two. What is the stumbling blocks? Well, clearly the Bible said that Yeshua was that stumbling stone that Israel stumbled at might be that he's removing the stumbling blocks in order for Israel to recognize her Messiah. In fact, it says in the scripture that the cornerstone becomes the headstone. That's kind of fascinating, isn't it? As we read in the scripture that he sits at the right hand of God. Well, interesting. The stumbling stone or the cornerstone that the master builders rejected, which was the, the, the Jewish people, becomes God himself. Or was it just that God was manifest in this man called Yeshua? That's what your true trinity really is. A true trinity is God himself manifesting himself in whatsoever way he chooses to do so. I'm just fascinated by it because we're living in an hour. We're about to see these things fulfilled. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon with Danoon Institute of Biblical Research, a production of IsraelReturns.com. Uh, join us with Barry Chalmers here shortly, www.radioliberty.com. Baruch Hashem.